Hi there, everybody. It's uh, Kevin Van Ord here at GameSpot, and I'm seated with Sergio Orlovsky, and you're here to show us Blitzkrieg 3, and I'm sure you're excited because you've you've come a long way for your press tour, and uh, you're leaving San Francisco after this, so I'm glad you found time to stop by. Thank you very much. Hello, everybody. Uh, I'll be happy to show you uh, Blitzkrieg 3, and uh, all we've got at this point, at least, which is half a stage of the game. So why don't you set up the stage for like, uh, I mean, I don't know how many people out there have played or necessarily even heard of Blitzkrieg 1 and Blitzkrieg 2. They seem to be from the, you know, the, the heyday of the real-time strategy game. So why don't you fill us in on, on what these games are and what this game is. So the first and the second Blitzkriegs, uh, they were uh, real-time strategy games focused on the tactical battles. So they didn't have any base, uh, and they have a set of the troops and, and the mission, and you have to accomplish this mission with this set of troops. And uh, uh, you can also advance the units between the missions and equip them better, progress them better, and so on and so far. Uh, in Blitz, Blitzkrieg 3, we decided to, uh, to make the next step, to make it online, and actually that's why it took so long big time for the real-time strategies, uh, not anymore, because they kind of stagnating in evolution. There is no new ideas in RTSs for the past many years at least. And uh, we also didn't have any new ideas for many years, so we didn't want to just do the same game again and again. Uh, fortunately, RTSs has helped us to do to make lots of subgenres uh, and I mean, as an industry, and we have like MOBA games, we have tower defense games, all these subgenres which came uh, from their RTS, but not their the main genre itself. So, in online, there were also several uh, efforts to do the uh, MMO RTS, and I think we found the solution finally how to do it. So uh, we call it asynchronous multiplayer. Uh, so where we combine the best elements and blending them together from both single player and multiplayer. So in Blitzkrieg 3 we finally introduced the base, but it's not the base which exists in the session. It's the base which, which, is, uh, which you build between the session and which visualizes your progress and you can build it up, uh, upgrade the buildings, construct better units, upgrade the units, you have a tech tree, you have generals, etc., etc., and then you make your army and go fight the battles uh, versus either uh, bots or uh, multiplayer battles against the other opponents. But uh, while you are online, your opponents are offline. So you're just preparing your defenses on the base, and you make it lots of thinking while you're doing that, and uh, then you kind of compete uh, your wits with the attacker, and so you attack the enemies who actually constructed the game for you. And the first two Blitzkriegs were very famous for their for the mods and add-ons, so we had more than 100 mods for the game, uh, because we have very sophisticated map editor, which allowed to do all these mods. Uh, in Blitzkrieg 3, we decided kind of to integrate these uh, features of this map editor into the game itself, so basically you creating your own defenses uh, and creating the maps for the other players to play through. So right now it's not very complicated, it's very simple just moving the buildings, upgrading them, uh, putting minefields, uh, hedgehogs, and this kind of stuff, but uh, in the future we will introduce, so before the launch we actually introduce uh, aviation, uh, like airplanes and counterattacks and airplanes. Uh, after the launch uh, we'll do very small and simple scripting things. Uh, so we'll be able to script the triggers and uh, uh, do certain surprises and counterattacks uh, for the attacking armies and so on and so forth. Now, the the base building that you're talking about does that does that take place entirely outside of the pressures of 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 real time combat at the same time do i get I, I get to go in there i get to to build my base the way i want it to be and then when i'm ready can i signal that i'm prepared to to be attacked is that is that how that sort of works between between players you're being attacked not like every 5 minutes uh, right. so uh, basically 
most of the time you are attacked when you're offline. Uh, so basically going offline means that you're ready uh, to be attacked. Right. And uh, on average you'll get like five plus attacks uh, during your offline period for like a day. So if you play a couple hours a day, this is probably what you ex would expect. So what you're talking about sort of, sort of recalls for me something like um, some things mobile games have tried, such as yeah. Clash of Clans or, yes. or something like that. Is that something that you looked to for, you know, for some thoughts on how you could turn that into an, <laughs> an actual strategy game as opposed to a thing that masquerades? I mean, no offense to Clash of Clans, but you know, I, I think of that as more as something that's for keeping my tapping fingers busy, but doesn't really involve actually a whole lot for me on the, when it comes to an actual battle. Is that, is that sort of where you're trying to deviate, though, from that? Is like, when it comes to battle, you actually have this real, real-time strategy, um, you know, combat here on, on yeah, screen. Yeah, so, so many ideas came from the social games at the beginning. If you remember uh, Backyard Monsters uh, from Kickside. And so I think this was the first game where asynchronous uh, multiplayer and strategy gaming uh, kind of emerged, and then with the great examples uh, in the mobile space when it was very well developed by Clash of Clans, Bloom Beach, and a bunch of other titles, like hundreds of clones. But uh, these were the titles we, which showed their, the power of asynchronous gameplay being pretty shallow games by themselves. What we want to do, we want to keep this great idea and make it properly uh, on a PC space uh, with a full-blown uh, gameplay experience. And actually, we started the game before Clash of Clans. It was more than three years ago. Uh, but we we saw what happened there, and we learned lots of uh, lessons from the mobile games, etc. But still, once again, we're bringing it in the full scale uh, to PC. And there are many other games, not many, but there are some other games who are actually doing the same thing right now. If you know, uh, like Mighty Quest for Epic Loot f uh, from Ubisoft, sure. or Dark Souls to a certain extent, uh, like Ghost Drivers in uh, racing games, etc., uh, etc. Et so the whole thing is coming to the to the big scale, and I think it's very nice emerging trend, which actually defines substantially new gameplay, uh, and it's a shame that it wasn't done before. So when you say asynchronously, does that generally mean that the AI is going to be taking over, that, that the AI understands what units the, that player has available and, and that AI will be assisting you in uh, battle? How does, that, how does that work? AI out? is not assisting. Uh, is, AI is uh, controlling your enemy. Okay. So you're, uh, you're playing as a uh, full-scale RTS battle. But the, on the other side, it's AI. But this AI is created, not, not the AI created, but the units and the patterns and triggers actually created by another person. Okay. So this is sort of like what you might see in, you know, some racing games nowadays where it, where it understands, you know, AI like human behavior and tries to replicate that. Is that, is that hard to do? It's not replicating a behavior, I be, okay. I'll be honest. Okay. Uh, so it, AI has certain patterns, but uh, you have certain uh, ways to influence the, the AI the way you want. So for okay. example, you, put, you can put uh, units on different stances, on put certain triggers, or for example, I can put the dive bombers to defend uh, the certain region, and once your, your tank will enter this region, the dive bombers will try to kill your t to kill your tank as a counterattack. Okay. Or you can put certain reserves of the units, which they flank you and go into the back once you have certain triggers. These kind of things they're not yet there because it's alpha build, but right. these these are the things which we would allow uh, be part of defensing strategies for the players. Uh, so in this way, they kind of influence the AI how to defend okay. their particular map. So this is all stuff that I can that I can set up in advance. It's part yes. of the base building process. Exactly. So that's what I said from the beginning. It's kind of blend between single player and multiplayer and we allow you to create uh, pretty much your own map and your own mission for the old players who will try to, uh, to crack it. 
Oh, goodness. Sergey, we've talked so much about so much. Hope it's not too complicated. I, no, not at all. I, but I, I worry that I might have missed touching on something that you meant that you meant to talk about that I haven't gotten to. Is there anything about Mon Blitzkrieg 3 that you feel money? That we've missed? Well, mo okay. Money. Okay. <laughs> how is how much is Blitzkrieg 3 going to cost? Okay. So we, uh, we're selling uh, pre-orders right now for $30. Okay. Okay. Which I believe is uh, pretty reasonable. And uh, pre order includes three campaigns and multiplayer access once we start alpha testing, public alpha testing in February. Okay. Uh, later on, after the launch, uh, we will open the game for free just for multiplayer. So you can still buy uh, the full version with the three campaigns and the multiplayer, but it will be more expensive for mm -hmm. sure. Uh, or you can just start playing multiplayer for free and then uh, purchase uh, the campaigns each by, uh, one by one uh, as a DLC. Okay. And what if I'm totally just into multiplayer? Is there is there room for microtransactions in, there is in no, this? There won't be any microtransactions in multiplayer, but it would be premium accounts, which will uh, double your XP and... Uh, and resources which you get from the missions, so which basically increase the speed of your progression okay. in the game. But we will not be selling any pay-to-win items. Uh, uh, so basically, there is no microtransactions. So that's the point. Right now, if I buy the whole package mm -hmm. outright, does that mean that that I sort of get all the benefits of that premium upgrade that multiplayer-only people would get? Uh, you will get. Uh, one or two months of premium okay. account as well, but then you'll have to pay again. Okay, so that, that's more or less sort of more like an MMO, uh, traditional MMO structure where you pay for the game and then pay a fee for... Except that you still can continue playing without paying. Uh, right. On a just slower pace of advancement. Okay. So it's optional. It's not okay. a mandatory subscription. Okay, so if I do subscribe, I'm really subscribing for uh, the convenience yes. of... of, of uh, of time spent differently is all. Mm -hmm. All right. What else? Uh, time. Well, timing. You know, obviously, you're talking about the the, the alpha test um, in February. Mm -hmm. I think you said. So when do you, when do you expect a, a full launch to come? This year. So we're expecting beta version to come out uh, April. Okay. Uh, this year and uh, the full scale launch by the end of the year. Sometime in 2015, and that's we're we're not gonna narrow it down beyond that. We'll just say sometime. Yes. But uh, I should say thank you. Of thank course, you. thank you for coming in. Thanks for making us part of your uh, your whirlwinds U.S. tour um, before you get back to the uh, the more arduous tasks of actually making the game. Um, and I'd rather you spend more your, more time doing that. I think. <laughs> um, but uh, thank you to uh, your your compatriots that joined you, and thanks to everybody that's that's watching and listening. Uh, Blitz Creek Three, sometime in 2015. We don't know when yet. Um, and uh, until then, I guess tune in to Gamespot for more looks at uh, all of the games you're most interested in.